This is very interesting because it there it gives some clarity on like what type of exercises are actually helpful for our longevity because there's so many different types. Can you speak to other, I, I, I guess, other types like cardio, yoga, Pilates, like high intensity, low intensity, swimming, you know, <laughs> are, sure. are some types of exercises better than others? So first of all, what, what I would say is that um, there's a Pareto's principle when it comes to exercise and longevity. So Pareto's principle being the 80-20 rule. Um, it's not precisely 80-20 in this case, but the concept of putting in, like what's the minimal effort you need to put in to get like the maximal result? So if you look at the chart, like where does it start to, the slope starts to decline? It's about 21, 22 minutes a day of physical activity. And ideally, okay. that physical activity is where you're actually getting your heart rate up, where it's a little bit labored to speak to somebody, right? And so that might be, for some people, it might be just walking if they're not in great shape. For other people, it might be a brisk walk. And for someone in spectacular shape, that might be like a, a, a jog or a run. Uh, but doing about 21, 22 minutes a day is probably going to get you about 60% of the benefits from exercise. Then the question becomes, well, how can you get to like 80, 90, 100% of the benefits? And I think that people should consider a few things. One is um, the, the cardiovascular side of things and the cardiovascular benefits. So we've already talked about VO2 max, for example, and trying to increase that. Um, the other is muscle. And we want to make sure we have adequate muscle, especially as we get older. So when you're hitting your every decade after you're hitting your your 30s and going to 40s and 50s and 60s, um, we're, we're losing a few percents per year of our strength and our muscle mass, but most importantly, our strength. And we want to try to um, prevent that as much as possible. And one of the better things to do is to actually build some muscle mass while we're younger, and it's easy to do so. So we have a bigger foundation from which we can lose some of that muscle mass. And we're also training some muscle memory so that when we do exercise in our later years, um, it's a little bit easier for us to gain that muscle mass. So I would say that everyone should consider um, um, exercises that are going to build some muscle and strength. And so what to do, it, it really comes down to the individual and what they're really into. I mean, um, swimming is fantastic. It's um, really no pressure on the joints. And if you're swimming, especially uh, like against a current or something like that, that can really um, stress the, the body in a good way and add to muscle mass. Um, weightlifting, obviously doing exercises like squats and deadlifts are, are very good for males and females and building that foundation and the core um, and so on. Dancing is is great. Now, dancing is going to be a little bit less on the muscle mass, though certain types of dance, I'm, I'm sure will do it more so than others, but um, at least you know the physical activity, the cardiovascular and so on, um, you can get it from dance. So it's really up to the individual and, and what, what they're going to be compliant with, what they're going to be motivated to do each day. Think about that first and then think about like, how can I optimize this even further? Yeah, yeah. But it's good to know like the important, I guess, the 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 little goals you said, like one is like heart rate, like cardio is important. And then in some sort of intense training <laughs> that kind of increases your ability to keep oxygen and use it. And then the third one is weightlifting, some sort of strength training. Exactly. And, and what you can consider also is um, the idea of the heart rate zones. So I don't want to uh, go into too much detail here, but there are, depending on your age and your cardiovascular fitness, there are different heart rate zones, one through five. And, you know, if you're just walking, you're at one. Uh, heart rate zone two is the steady state cardio zone where people, especially if you're training for uh, athletic events, like you, you want to speed up your 5K or your uh, your marathon time or something, um, trainers encourage people to spend most of their time in zone two. That's building up the, the aerobic base. Um, and then uh, high intensity interval training is going to be in that zone five. I personally, my, my VO2 max doesn't increase in zone two. It only increases when I'm, I'm pushing myself in zone five and zone four. Uh, so I, I push myself a little bit more than the, um, you know, than someone training for a marathon would um, into that zone four, zone five, high intensity stuff. But there is a lot of information out there on the web uh, that people can look up and on YouTube as well about the different zones of cardio. And depending on what your goals are, um, 
you, know, you might want to consider heart rate-based training when it comes to cardio.